Corey Lambertson with Whitmix Corporation. Today I'm going to highlight how to use the Asiga Composer software joined with the Asiga 3D printers in using our Verisplint 3D printing resin. With the Asiga Composer software open, we're going to create a new job. When creating a new build, we're going to find our target printer and then we're going to choose what material we want to print with. We're going to choose the Verisplint 19.1 and then we're going to choose what layer thickness we want to print it in. Printing in 50 and 100 micron layers is acceptable for this type of application. With the Sega Composer software open, we can see here that we have the build envelope. We will go ahead and simply import in our STL file into the build envelope. With our STL file in the software, we're going to nest it into the build envelope. If we only have one structure, I do prefer to place it directly in the center of the build envelope. From here, we're going to apply the supports to the STL file. From here, we'll open the build wizard to transmit the data to the printer. I'm going to name this job. And I'm going to send the build to the 3D printer. The estimated build time for this 3D printed splint is 27 minutes and 3 seconds. From here, we have the opportunity to view the slices that are being transferred to the 3D printer. This is every layer that will be projected by the DLP projector. I recommend rolling through the slices to make sure that there are no defects. Alright, everything looks great. Okay. After the file has been transferred over from the computer to the printer, we need to insert our resin vat and then pour in our resin. This is the Bear Splint Resin OS. So I'm going to go ahead and shake it up for a little bit. You do want to agitate it for a couple minutes. And then from there, we're going to pour in about one centimeter deep of resin. This tray already had resin in it from before, so I'm just topping off from the previous print. After applying resin, we're going to insert our build plate back into the printer, fix it, and then we'll start the print job. And here the build plate will dip into the resin vat and we'll start printing the splint layer by layer. All right, so at this point in time, the printer has completed its print job. So we're going to open the hood and we're going to remove the build plate from the printer itself. So 
so at this time we can see and inspect that the print completed successfully looks really good so from here we're going to move on to our cleaning station and then we'll talk about post curing after that so to remove the printed splint from the build plate we're going to use one of our scraping tools and we're just going to get underneath the supports and detach it from the build plate so at this point in time I do like to remove the supports before placing into the alcohol container however you don't have to this is just personal opinion After I have most of the supports removed, I am now going to place it into the alcohol container. And from there, we're going to place our alcohol container into our ultrasonic cleaner. So we have a two bath system. The first bath is to remove the bulk residual resin that's on the uh, splint. And after that, the second bath is to go ahead and do a final clean to the splint itself. So we'll do both containers for a total of five minutes. And then we'll take the splint out and place it into the second bath. This is now going to be considered the clean bath. From here, we'll let this process in the ultrasonic cleaner for another five minutes. After that, we'll move on to post-curing our splint. From here, after we remove the splint, we're going to inspect it to make sure there's no residual resin left on it. To do that, we do need to have it dried. So I'm going to use compressed air for this case. So while inspecting it, I'm looking for any sort of resin debris itself. This looks nice and clean. We can still see that the support sprues are on there. So we will finish that off using our fiber wheels. But from here, we do need to go ahead and cure this in our auto flash curing unit. So we're going to actually cure this for about six or exactly 6,000 flashes. After the flashes are completed, we'll open the door, and now our splint is completely cured. From here, we're going to use our fiber wheels to remove the excess support nubs, and then we will go ahead and pumice and polish our splint to a crystal clear finish. And now we are ready to go ahead and remove all of the little support dimples off the printed object. So you can see it has a rough surface where the supports are. For removing these, we're going to use Whitmix's fiber wheels. They come in two different courses. So we have uh, a very rough course and we have a fine finish wheel. So we're going to start with the coarse wheel and then we'll move on to the actual fine uh, wheel itself to give it a more of a, a smoother surface finish. So we're going to start with our coarse wheel and for our handpiece we're going to have this set at about 10,000 RPMs. We don't really want to have this at a high speed. Make sure you have proper air evacuation when doing this so you do not have any sort of contaminants that enter your lungs. Uh, if you do not have proper air evacuation or dust control, you will want to wear a mask for this process.
of the supports are removed using the coarse wheel. We are going to move on to using the fine wheel to remove any sort of scratches that the coarse wheel may have applied to the splint. any sort of deep scratches. We will want to finish buffing out any sort of extra marring that we see on it. After we have removed all of the supports from the splint using our fiber wheels, We'll move on to pumicing and polishing the splint on a lathe. We are now going to pumice and polish the splint. For this, we're going to use a lathe and we're going to use our pumice CL85 medium grit pumice. So after we have pumiced our splint, we can see that all the micro scratches are almost completely gone and it has more of a matte finish to the actual splint itself. And it can come down to a almost glass-like gloss finish itself. To do that, I'm using just a simple polishing wheel with polishing compound. Now to make this polish pop even further, you can use a nice soft rag wheel on the lathe and it will really give it a nice high shine.